newsletter that Don Pedro of Aragon comes this night to Messina. He is very near by this. He was not three leagues off when I left him. How many gentlemen have you lost in this action? But few of any sort and none of name. I find here that Don Pedro hath bestowed much honor on a young Florentine called Claudio. He hath for himself beyond the promise of his age, doing in the figure of a lamb the feast of a lion. He hath an uncle here in Messina, will be very much glad of it. I pray you, is Signor Montanto returned from the wars or no? I know none of that name, lady. My cousin means Signor Benedict of Padua. Oh, he's returned, and as pleasant as ever he was. I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten in these wars? But how many hath he killed? For indeed, I promise to eat all of his killing. He hath done good service in these wars, lady. And a good soldier too, lady. And a good soldier to a lady, but what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord, a man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtues. Mm. It is so indeed. He is no less than a stuffed man. But for the stuffing, well, we are all mortal. You must not, sir, mistake my niece. There's a kind of merry war betwixt Signor Benedict and her. They never meet, but there's a squirmish of wit between them. Alas, he gets nothing by that. In our last conflict, four of his five wits went halting off. And now is the whole man governed with one. So that if he have wit enough to keep himself warm, let him bear it for a difference between himself and his horse. For it is all the wealth that he hath left to be known a reasonable creature. Who is his companion now? He hath every month a new sworn brother. He's most in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord, it will hang upon him like a disease. He is sooner caught than the pestilent, than the taker runs presently mad. God help the noble Claudio. If he have caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pound ere he be cured. <laughs> I will have friends with you, lady. Do, good friend. You will never run mad, niece. No, not till hot January. Don Pedro's approach. Good Leonardo. Are you come to meet your trouble? The fashion of the world is to avoid cost, yet you encounter it. Never came trouble to my house in the likeliness of your grace. You embrace your charge too willingly. I think this is your daughter. Her father hath many times told me so. Were you in doubt, ma'am, that you asked him? Signor Benedict, no. If Leonardo be her mother, she would not have her head on her shoulders for all Messina, as like her as she is. I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What? My dear Lady Disdain, are you yet living? Is it possible Disdain should die while she hath such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to Disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat. But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. And I would, I could, find it in my heart that I have not a hard heart for truly I love none. A dear happiness to women. They would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God in my cold blood I am of your humor for that. I had rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind. So some gentleman or other shall scrape a predestinate scratch face. Scratching could not make it worse, and for such a face as yours were. Well, you are a rare parent teacher. The bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would, my horse, have the speed of your tongue, and so good a continuer. But keep your way. E God's name, I have done. You always end with a jade trick. I know you of old. That is the sum of all, Leonata. Signor Claudio and Signor Benedict. My dear friend Leonata hath invited you all. I tell her we shall stay here at least a month. Yeah. <laughs> My lord, being reconciled to the prince, your brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I am not of many words, but I thank you. Please, your grace, lead on. Your hand, Leonata. We will go together. Benedict. Is thou not the daughter of good Leonardo? I noted her not, but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? Do you question me as an honest man should do? For my simple, true judgment? Or would you have me speak after my custom, as being a professed tyrant to their sex? Now I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. Why, he faith, methinks she's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for her great praise. Only this commendation I can afford her, that were she other than as she is, she were unhandsome. And being no other but as she is, I do not like her. I think it's time in sport. I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likes her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? 
In mine eyes, she is the sweetest lady I ever did look upon. I can see yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. And there's her cousin, and were she not possessed with a fury, exceeds her as much in beauty as the first of May doth the last of December. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself. Were I sworn the contrary of hero would be my wife. Is it come to this? Till I never see a bachelor of threescore again. Look, Don Pedro's returned to seek you. What secret hath held you here that you followed not to Leonatus? He is in love. With who? Now that is your grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. With Hero, Leonatus' daughter. Amen. If you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thought. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faith and troth, my lord, I spoke mine. That I love her. I feel. That she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. And never can maintain his part but in the force of his will. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her my most humble thanks. But I will live a bachelor. I shall see thee, ere I die, grow pale with love. With anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, not with love. Well, as time shall try, in time the savage bull doth bear the oak. The savage bull may, but if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck off the bull's horns and set them in my forehead, and let me be vilely painted. And in such great letters as I write, here is good horse to hire. Let them signify unto my sign, here you may see Benedict the <laughs> married man. In the meantime, good Signor Benedict, repair to Leonatus. Commend me to her, and tell her that I shall not fail her at supper, for indeed she hath made great preparation. Examine your conscience, and so I leave you. My liege, your highness may now do me good. My love is thine to teach. Teach it but how, and thou shalt see how apt it is to learn thee any hard lesson which may do thee good. Hath Leonata any son, my lord? No child but Hero. She's her only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? Oh, my lord. When you went onward on this intended action, I looked with a soldier's eye that liked, that had a rougher task in hand than to drive liking to the name of love, but now I'm returned, and these war thoughts have left their rooms vacant, and in their place come thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young Hero is, saying I liked her ere I went to wars. Thou dost love fair Hero, cherish it. And I will break with her and her mother, and thou shalt have her. I know we will have reveling tonight. I shall assume thy part in some disguise, and tell fair Hero I am Claudio. And in her bosom I'll unclasp my heart, and take her hearing prisoner with the force and strength of my amorous tale. Then, after to her mother will I break, if the conclusion is, she shall be thine. In practice, let us put it presently. What's the good year, my lord? Why are you thus out of measure sad? There is no measure in the occasion that breeds, therefore the sadness is without limit. You should hear reason. And when I have heard it, what, what blessing brings it? If not a present remedy, at least a patient sufferance. I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause and smile at no man's jests, eat when I have stomach and wait on no man's leisure, sleep when I am drowsy and tend on no man's business, laugh when I am merry and claw no man in his humor. Yea, but you must not make the full show of this till you may do it without controlment. You have of late set out against your brother, and he hath taken you newly into his grace, where it is impossible that you should take true root but by the fair weather that you make yourself. I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. In this, though I cannot be said to be a flattering, honest man, it must not be denied, but I am a plain dealing villain. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of your discontent? I make all use of it, for I use it only. Who comes here? What news, Horatio? 
I came yonder from a great supper. The prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonata, and I can give you intelligence on an intended marriage. Will it serve for any mild to build mischief upon? What is he for a fool that betroths himself to unquietness? Mary, it is your brother's right hand. Who, the most exquisite Claudio? Even he. A proper squire. And who, and who, which way looks he? Mary, on Hero, the daughter and heir of Leonardo. How came you to this? I heard it agreed upon that the prince should woo Hero for himself, and having obtained her, give her to Count Claudio. Come, come, let us thither. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him in any way, I bless myself in every way. You're both sure and will assist me? To the death, my lord. Let us to the great supper. Their cheer is the greater that I am subdued. Shall we go prove what's to be done? We'll wait upon your lordship. <laughs> Disposition. He were an excellent man that were made just in the midway between him and Benedict. One is too like an image and says nothing, and the other too like my lady's eldest son, ever more tattling. Then have Signor Benedict's covenant to Count John's mouth and have Count John's melancholy in Signor Benedict's face. <laughs> With a good leg and a good foot and, and money enough in his purse, such a man would win any woman in the world if he could get her a good will. By my troth, niece, thou will never give thee a husband if thou be so sure of thy tongue. In fact, she is too cursed. Too cursed is more than cursed. I shall lessen God's sending that way. For it is said, God sends a cursed cow short horns. But to a cow too cursed, he sends none. So by being too cursed, God will send you no horns. Just if he send me no husband. For the which blessing I am at him upon my knees every morning and evening. Lord, I could not endure a husband with a beard on his face. I'd rather lie in the woolen. You may light on a husband that hath no beard. What should I do with him? Dress him in my apparel, make him my waiting gentlewoman. <laughs> <laughs> he that hath a beard is more than a youth, and he that hath no beard is less than a man. And he that is more than a youth is not for me, and he that is less than a man, I am not for him. Therefore, I will even take six pence in earnest of the bear herd and lead his apes into hell. Well, then, go you into hell? No, but to the gate. And there will the devil meet me like an old cuckold with horns on his head and say, Get you to heaven, Beatrice, get you to heaven. Here's no place for you, maids. So, deliver I up my apes and away to St. Peter for the heavens. He shows me where the bachelors sit, and there live we as merry as the day is long. Well, niece, I trust that you'll be ruled by your mother. Yes, Faith. It is my cousin's duty to make curtsy and say, Mother, as it please you. But yet, for all that, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow, or else make another curtsy and say, Mother, as it please me. Daughter, remember what I told you. If the prince do solicit you in that kind, you know your answer. Your mothers are entered, mother, make good room. Woo! <laughs> Lady, will you walk about with your friend? So you walk softly, look sweetly, and say nothing. I am yours to the walk, and especially when I walk away. With me in your company. I may say so, when I please. And when please you to say so. When I like your favor, for God defend the loot should be like the case. I know you well enough. You are Signor Antonio. That's a word I am not. I know you by the waggling of your head. To tell you the truth, I counterfeit him. You could never do him so ill well, unless you were the very man. Here's his dry hand up and down. You are he, you are he. That's a word I am not. Will you not tell me who told you so? No, you shall pardon me. Nor will you not tell me who you are? Not now. That I was disdainful, and that I had my good wit out of the hundred merry tales. Well, this was Signor Benedict that said so. What's he? I am sure you know him well enough. Not I, believe me. Did he never make you laugh? I pray you, what is he? Why, he is the prince's jester, a very dull fool. Only his gift is in devising impossible slanders. None but libertines delight in him, for he both pleases men and angers them, and then they laugh at him and beat him. I'm sure he's in the fleet. I would he had boarded me. When I know the gentleman, I'll tell him what you say. Do, do. We must follow the leaders. 
and every good thing. Two of my brothers, amorous Andrew, and hath withdrawn with her mother to speak with her about it. The ladies follow her, and but one visor remains. And that is Claudio. I know him by his bearing. Uh, are you not Signor Benedict? You know me well, I am he. Signor, you are very near my brother in his love. He is enamored on Hero. I pray you dissuade him from her. She is no equal for his birth. How know you he loves her? I heard him swear his affection. So did I too, and he swore he would marry her tonight. Come, let us to the banquet. Thus answer I in the name of Benedict, but hear these ill news with the ears of Claudio. Tis certain so, the prince woos for himself. Friendship is constant in all things, save in the office and affairs of love. This is an accident of hourly proof which I mistrusted not. Farewell, therefore, hero. Count Claudio. Yea, the same. Come, will you go with me? Whither? Even to the next willow. About your own business, county, for the prince hath got your hero. I wish him joy of her. But did you think the prince would have served you thus? I pray you leave me. Alas, poor hurt fowl. Now will he creep into sedges. But that my lady Beatrice should know me, and not know me. The prince is fool. I am not so reputed. It is the base, though bitter disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person, and so gives me out. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. Now, senor, where's the count? Did you see him? Troth, my lord, I have played the part of Lady Fame. I found him here as melancholy as a lodge in a warren. I told him, and I think I told him true, that your grace had got the goodwill of this young lady. The Lady Beatrice hath a quarrel to you. The gentleman who danced with her told her she is much wronged by you. Ho, ho, ho. She misused me past the endurance of a block. She told me, not thinking that I had been myself, that I was the prince's jester, that I was duller than a great thaw, huddling jest upon jest with such impossible conveyance upon me that I stood like a man in a mark with a whole army shooting at me. She speaks poniards, and every word stabs. If her breath were as terrible as her terminations, there were no living near her. She would infect to the North Star. So indeed, all disquiet, horror, and perturbation follows her. Oh look, here she comes. Will your grace command me on any service to the world's end? I will go on the slightest errand now to the antipodes that you can devise to send me on. But you, uh, hair off the great Sam's beard. Do you any ambassage to the pygmies, rather than hold three words conference with this harpy? You have no employment for me. None but to desire your good company. Oh, God, sir, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my dear lady tongue. Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord. He lent me in a while, and I gave him use for it. A double heart for his single one. Mary, once before he wanted of me with false dice. Therefore, your grace may well say I have lost it. You have put him down, lady. You have put him down. So I would not he should do me, my lord, lest I should prove the mother of fools. I have brought Count Claudio, whom you sent me to seek. What? How now, Count? Wherefore are you sad? Not sad, my lord. How then? Neither, my lord. The count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well, but civil count. Civil as an orange and something of that jealous complexion. Ye faith, lady, I think your blazon to be true. Though I'll be sworn, if he be so, his conceit is false. Here, Claudio, I have wooed in thy name, and fair hero is one. I have broke with her mother, and her goodwill obtained. Name the day of marriage, and God give thee joy. Count, take of me, my daughter, and with her my fortune. His grace hath made the match, and all grace say amen to it. Speak, Count, tis your cue. Silence is but the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. Lady, is your mine, I am yours. Speak, cousin, or if you cannot, stop him with a kiss, and let not him speak neither. In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. Yea, my lord, I thank it. Poor fool, it keeps on the windy side of care. My cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart. And so she doth, cousin. Good lord for alliance. 
Thus goes everyone to the world but I, and I am sunburnt. I may sit in a corner and cry hey-ho for a husband. Lady Beatrice, I will get you one. <laughs> I'd rather have one of your father's getting. Hath your grace and error a brother like you? Your father got excellent husbands if a maid could come by them. Would you have me, lady? No, my lord. Unless I might have another for working days. Your grace is too costly to wear every day. But I beseech your grace, pardon me. I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends me. And to be merry best becomes you, for out of the question you were born in a merry hour. No, sure, my lord. My mother cried, but then there was a star danced, and under that was I born. Cousins, God give you joy. By my troth, a pleasant-spirited young lady. There's little of the melancholy elements in her, my lord. She is never sad, but when she sleeps in, not ever sad then. For I've heard my daughter say she often dreamt of unhappiness and waked herself with laughing. She cannot endure to hear tell of a husband. Oh, by no means. She mocks all her wooers out of suit. She were an excellent wife for Benedict. Oh, Lord, my Lord, if they were but a week married, they would talk themselves mad. County Claudio, when mean you to go to church? Tomorrow, my Lord. Not till Monday, my dear son, which is hence a just seven nights and a time too brief, too, to have all things answer my mind. I warrant thee, Claudio, the time shall not pass dully by us. In the interim, I will undertake one of Hercules' great labors, which is to bring Lady Beatrice and Signor Benedict into a mountain of affection the one with the other. I would fain have it a match, and I doubt not but to fashion it, if you three will but minister such assistance as I will give you direction. My lord, I am for you, though it cost me ten nights' watchings. And I, my lord? And you too, gentle hero. I will do any modest office, my lord, to help my cousin do a good husband. We can do this. Cupid is no longer an archer. We shall have all his glory, for we are the only true love gods. Go in with me, and I will tell you my drift. It is so. The Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonata. Yea, my lord, but I can cross it. Any bar, any cross, any impediment shall be made sinable to me. I am sick in displeasure to him, and whatsoever comes athwart his affection ranges evenly with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? Not honestly, my lord, but so covertly that no dishonesty shall appear in me. Show me briefly how. I think I told your lordship a year since how much I am in favor of Margaret, the waiting gentlewoman to hero. I remember. I can, at any unseasonable instant of the night, appoint her to look out at her lady's chamber window. What life is in that to be the death of this marriage? The poison of that lies in you to temper. Go you to the prince your brother. Spare not to tell him that he hath wronged his honor in marrying the renowned Claudio, whose estimation do you mightily hold up to a contaminated stale such as one as hero. What proof shall I make of that? Proof enough to misuse the prince, to vex Claudio, to undo Hero, and kill Leonardo. Look you for any other issue. Only to despite them, I will endeavor anything. Go then. Find me meet hour to draw Don Pedro and the Count Claudio alone. Tell them that you know the Hero loves me. Intend a kind of zeal both to the prince and Claudio, as in love of your brother's honor who hath made this match and his friend's reputation. They will scarcely believe this without trial. Offer them instances but shall bear no less likelihood than to see me at her chamber window. Hear me call Margaret Hero, hear Margaret turn me Claudio, and bring them to see this the very night before the intended wedding. For in the meantime, I will so fashion the matter that Hero shall be absent, and there shall appear such seeming truth of Hero's disloyalty that jealousy shall be called assurance and all the preparation overthrown. Grow this to what adverse issue it can, I will put it in practice. Be cunning in the working of this, and thy fee is a thousand ducats. Be you constant in the accusation, and my cunning shall not shame me. I will presently go learn their day of marriage. I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love, will after he hath laughed at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. And such a man is Claudio. I will not be sworn, but love may transform me to an oyster. But I'll make my oath on it. Till he hath made an oyster of me, he shall never make me such a fool. One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another is wise, yet I am well. Another virtuous, yet 
that I am well. But till all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. Rich she shall be, that's certain. Wise or I'll none. Virtuous or I'll never cheapen her. Fair or I'll never look on her. Mild or come not near me. Noble or not I for an angel. Of good discourse, an excellent musician, and her hair shall be of whatever color it pleases God. <laughs> the prince and monsieur love. I will hide me in the arbor. See you where Benedict hath hid himself. Oh, very well, my lord. Come, Balthazar, we'll hear that song again. Oh, good, my lord. Tax not so bad a voice to slander music any more than once. And he would have been a dog that should have howled thus, they would have hanged him. Yea, Mary, dost thou hear, Balthazar? I pray thee, get us some excellent music, for tomorrow we would have it at the Lady Hero's chamber window. The best I can, my lord. Do so. Very well. Come hither, Leonata. What was it you told me of today? That your niece Beatrice was in love with Signor Benedict? Oh, eh. I did never think that lady would have loved any man. No, nor I neither, but most wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict. Whom she hath, and all outward behavior seems ever to abhor. Is it possible? By my troth, my lord, I cannot tell what to think of it, but that she loves him with an enraged affection. It's past the infinite of thought. Maybe she doth but counterfeit. Faith like enough. Oh, God, counterfeit? There was never counterfeit came so near the life of passion as she discovers it. Why, what effects of passion shows she? Bait the hook well, this fish will bite. What effects, my lord? She will sit you. You heard my daughter tell you how. She did indeed. How? How, I pray you? I should think that's a goal, but Knavery cannot, sure, hide himself in such reverence. He hath taken the infection, hold it up. Hath she made her affection known to Benedict? No, and she swears she never will. That's her torment. Tis true indeed. So your daughter says, shall I, says she, that have so oft encountered him with scorn right to him that I love him? Then down upon her knee she falls, weeps, sobs, beats her heart, tears her hair, prays, curses, oh sweet Benedict, God give me patience. She doth indeed. My daughter says so. My daughter sometimes afraid she will do a desperate outrage to herself. It is very true. It were good that Benedict knew of it by some other, if she will not discover it. To what end? Do it but scorn the poor lady and torment her worse. I pray you, tell Benedict of it and hear what he will say. Were it good, think you? Mm. Hero thinks surely she will die, for she will die if he do not love her. And she will die if she make her love known, and she will die if she woo her. If she should make tender of her love, tis very possible he'll scorn it. For the man, as know you all, hath a contemptible spirit. He is a very proper man. He hath indeed a good outward happiness. Before God and in my mind, very wise. He doth indeed possess some sparks that are like wit. Let it cool the while. I love Benedict well, and I wish he could modestly examine himself to see how unworthy he is so good a lady. My lord, will you walk? Dinner is ready. If he do not dote on her upon this, I will never trust my expectations. Let the same net be spread for her, and that must her gentlewomen carry. Let us send her in to call him in to dinner. <laughs> this can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from Hero. Love me? Why, it must be requited. They say, too, that she would rather die than show any sign of affection. I did never think to marry. I must not seem proud, for I will be horribly in love with her. I may chance have some odd quirks and remnants of wit broken on me because I have railed against marriage for so long, which doth not the appetite alter. A man loves the meat in his youth that he cannot endure in his age. The world must be peopled. When I said I would die a bachelor, I did not think I should live till I were married. Here comes Beatrice. My this day, she's a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. Against my will, I am s sent to bid you come in to dinner. Oh, fair Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. I took no more pains for those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, 
I would not have come. You take pleasure, then, in the message? Yay. Just so much as you may take upon a knife's point and choke a jaw with all. You have no stomach, senor. Fare you well. <laughs> Against my will, I am sent to come bid you into dinner? There's a double meaning in that. I took no more pains for thanks than you took pains to thank me? That's as much as to say, any pains I take for you is as easy as thanks. I will go get her picture! Sister Margaret, go to the night parlor. There shall find my, my cousin Beatrice proposing with the prince and Claudio. Whisper her ear and tell her that I and Ursula walk in the orchard and our whole discourse is all of her. There she will hide to listen our propose. This is thy office. Farewell in it and leave us alone. I will make her come. I warn you presently. Now, Ursula, when Beatrice doth come as we do trace this alley up and down, our talk must only be of Benedict. When I do name him, let it be my part to praise him more than ever did merit. Now begin, for look, where Beatrice like a lap ring runs, close to the ground to hear our conference. No, truly, Ursula, she is too disdainful, and our spirit is coy and wild as haggards of the rock. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince and my newly chosen lord. And did they bid you tell her of it, madam? They did entreat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them. If they love Benedict, to let him wrestle with affection and to never let Beatrice know of it. Well, why did you so? Doth not the gentleman deserve as full, as fortunate a bed, as ever Beatrice shall couch upon. Oh, God of love, I know he doth as much may be yielded to a man, but nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Disdain and scorn, right, sparkling in her eyes, mesmerizing what they look on. And her wit values itself so highly, that to her, all matter else seems weak. She cannot love. Sure, I think so, and therefore certainly, it were not good. She knew his love. We shall make sport at it. Why, you speak the truth. I never yet saw a man how wise, how noble, how young, how rarely featured. But she would spell him backwards. She turns every man the wrong side out and never gives the truth and virtue that which merit and simpleness forsake. Sure, sure. Such carping is not commendable. <laughs> no, not to be so odd. And from Beatrice, this cannot be commendable. But... Who dare tell her? If I should speak, she would mock me in air. Yet, tell her of it. Hear what she will say. No, rather I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passions. There I will devise some honest slanders to stain my cousin with. Oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. She cannot be so much without true judgment, having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have, as to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. Indeed, he hath an excellent good name. His excellence did earn it ere he had it. When are you married, madam? Why, every day tomorrow. Come, go in. I'll show thy some outfits and have thy counsel, which is the best to furnish me tomorrow. <laughs> She's limed, I warrant you. We have caught her, madam. If it proves so, then loving goes by halves. Some Cupid kills with arrows, some with traps. in mine ears. Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much? Contempt, farewell, and maiden pride adieu. No glory lives behind the back of such. And Benedict, love on, I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. If thou dost love, my kindness shall incite thee to bind our loves up in a holy band. For others say thou dost deserve, and I believe it better than reporting thee. Gallants, I am not as I have been. So say I, methinks you are sadder. I hope he be in love. Hang him truant. There's no true drop of blood in him to be truly touched with love. If he be sad, he wants money. I have the toothache. Draw it. Hang it. You must hang it first and draw it afterwards. What side for the toothache? Well, if he be not in love with some woman, 
There's no believing in old signs. He brushes his hat of the mornings. What should that bode? Hath any man seen him at the barber's? No. But the barber's man hath been seen with him. Indeed, he looks younger than he did. Nay, he rubs himself with civet. Can you smell him out by that? <laughs> That's as much as to say the poor youth in love. The greatest note of it is his melancholy. Yet is this no charm for the toothache. Leonardo, walk aside with me. I have studied eight or nine wise words to speak with you, which these hobby horses must not hear. For my life, to break with her about Beatrice. To a certain sewin, by this hero and Margaret have done their work on Beatrice, and then the two bears will not bite one another when they meet. My lord and brother, God save you. Good in, brother. If your leisure served, I would speak with you. In private. If it please you, yet the Count Claudio may hear, for what I would speak of concerns him. What's the matter? Means your lordship to be married tomorrow. You know he does. I know, I know not that when he knows what I know. If you know any impediment, I pray you discover it. You may think I love you not. Let that appear hereafter, and aim better at me by that I will now manifest. Why? What's the matter? I came hither to tell you, and circumstances shortened, for she has been too long a talking of. The lady is disloyal. Who, hero? Even she. Leonata's hero, your hero, every man's hero. Disloyal? The word is too good to paint out her wickedness. I could say she were worse. Think you of a worse title, and I will fit her to it. But wonder not till further warrant. Go but with me tonight. You shall see her chamber window entered even the night before her wedding day. If you love her then, tomorrow wed her. But it would better fit your honor to change your mind. <laughs> May this be so? I will not think it! If you trust not that you see, confess not that you know. But if you will go with me tonight, I will show you enough. I see anything tonight on why I should not marry her. Tomorrow in that congregation where I should wed, there I will shame her. And as I wooed for thee to obtain her, I will join with thee to disgrace her. I will disparage her no farther to you are my witnesses. Bear it coldly but till midnight, and let the issue show itself. Oh, day untowardly turned! Oh, mischief strangely thwarting! Oh, play right well prevented! So you will say when you have seen the sequel. And one and two 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 and Are you good men and true? Yea, or else it were pity, but they should suffer salvation, body and soul. Nay, that were a punishment too good for them, should they have any allegiance to them, being chosen for the prince's watch. Well, give them the charge, neighbor Dogberry. First, who is the most desireless man to be constable? <clears throat> uh, Hugh Oatcake, sir, or, uh, uh, George Seacole, for they can write and read. Come hither, neighbor Seacole. God hath blessed you with a good name. Both which, Master. You have! I knew it would be your answer. Well, for your favor, sir, why give God thanks, and make no boast of it? And for your writing and reading, let that appear, and there is no need of such vanity. You are thought here to be the most senseless and fit man for the constable of the watch. Therefore, bear you the lantern. This is your charge. Ooh. You shall comprehend all vagrant men and bid any man stand in the prince's name. How if he will not stand? Why then, let him go and call the rest of the watch together and thank God you're rid of a knave. If he will not stand when he is bidden, he is none of the prince's subjects. True, and they are to meddle with none but the prince's subjects. And they shall also make no noise in the streets. Ow! For for the watch to babble and talk is most tolerable and will not be endured. We will rather sleep than talk. We know what belongs to a watch. Why, you speak like a quiet and most ancient watchman. Reckon that's us sleeping should offend. Only have a care that your bills not be stolen. Well, you ought to call to all alehouses and bid those that are drunk get them to bed. How if they will not? Why then, let them alone till they are sober. And if they make you not, then the better answer you may say they are not the men you took them for. Well, sir. If you meet a thief, you may suspect him to be no true man. The less you meddle or make with them, the more is for your honesty. If we know him to be a thief, 
Shall we not lay hands on him? The most peaceful way for you, if you do, take a thief, is to let him show himself who he is and let him steal out of your company. You've always been called most merciful man, partner. Truly, I would not hang a dog by my will, much less a man who hath any honesty in him. If you hear a child cry in the night, you must call to the nurse and bid her still it. How if the nurse be asleep and will not hear us? Why, then depart in peace, and let the child wake her with crying. I think it be so. Ah, uh, well, masters, good night. And there be any matter of weighted chances, call upon me. Keep your fellow's counsels, and your own, and good night. Come, neighbor. Well, masters, we hear our charge. Let us go sit upon the church bench until two, and then all to bed. Oh, one word more. Honest neighbors, I pray you watch about lean out his door. With the wedding being there tomorrow, there's a great coil tonight. Adieu, be vigilant, I beseech you. What, Conrad? Peace, stir not. Conrad, I say. Here, man, I'm at thy elbow. Mess, and my elbow itched. I thought there would a scab follow. I will owe thee an answer to that. And now, forward with thy tail. Stand thee close. Some treason, masters, yet stand close. Therefore know I have earned of Don John a thousand ducats. Is it possible that any villainy should be so dear? Tush, I may as well say the fool's a fool. But seest thou not what a thief this fashion is? I know that fool. He has been a vile thief this seven year. He goes up and down like a gentleman. I remember his name. Didst thou not hear somebody? No, t'was the vein on the house. Know that I have tonight wooed Margaret, the Lady Hero's gentlewoman, by the name of Hero. She leads me out at her mistress's chamber window, bids me a thousand times good night. I tell this till vilely. I should first tell thee how the Prince Claudio and my master, planted and placed and possessed by my master Don John, saw afar off in the orchard this amiable, amiable encounter. And thought they Margaret was hero? Two of them did, the prince and Claudio. But the devil my master knew she was Margaret. Stop! We charge you in the prince's name! Stand! Call up the right master constable. We have here recovered the most dangerous piece of lechery that ever was known in the commonwealth. And fool is one of them. Remember him, he wears a lock. Masters, masters! You'll be made in full forth, I warrant you. Masters, never speak, we charge you. Let us obey, obey you go with us. We like to prove a goodly commodity being taken up of these men's bills. A commodity in question, I warrant you. Come, we'll obey you. Wake my cousin Beatrice and desire her to rise. I will, lady. And beg her, bid her come hither. Well, troth, I think your other rabato were better. No, pray thee, good Meg, I'll wear this. By my troth is not so good, and I warn your cousin will say so. Cousin's a fool, and thou art another. I'll wear none but this. I like the new tire with an excellent leaf. The hair were a thought browner, and the gowns the most rare fashion in faith. God give me joy to wear it, for my heart is exceedingly heavy. It will be heavier soon by the weight of a man. Fie upon thee! Art not ashamed? Of what, lady? I'll up thine no nobody. Is there any heart heavy? Is there any heart in the heavy for the husband? None, I think, and it be the right husband and the right wife. Otherwise, tis light and not heavy. Ask my lady Beatrice else. Here she comes. Good morrow, cuz. Good morrow, sweet hero. Why, how now do you speak in this sick tune? I'm out of all other tune, methinks. These gloves the Count sent me, they are an excellent perfume. I am stuffed, cousin, I cannot smell. A maid, and stuffed there's goodly catching of a cold. Oh, God help me. Get you some of distilled Cardus Benedictus and lay it to your heart. It is the only thing for a qualm. There thou prickest her with a thistle. Benedictus? Why Benedictus? You have some moral in this Benedictus. Moral? <laughs> no. By my drop, I have no moral meaning. I meant plain holy thistle. You may think perchance that I think you are in love. Nay, by your lady, I am not such a fool to think that you are in love, or that you will be in love, or that you can be in love. Yet Benedict was such another, and now has he become a man. He swore he would never marry, and yet now, in spite of his heart, he eats his meat without grudging. And how you'll be converted, I know not. But methinks you look with your eyes as other women do. What pace is this that thy tongue keeps? Not a false gallop. <laughs> Madam, withdraw! The prince, the count, Signor Benedict, Don John, and all the gallants of the town are come to fetch you to turn! Come to dress me, good cause, good Meg, good Ursula. <laughs> What would 
Would you with me, honest neighbor? Mary! Sir, I would have some confidence with you that discerns you near me. Brief, I pray you, for you see it is a busy time with me. Mary, this it is, sir. Yes, in truth it is, sir. What is it? My good friend, Mary, sir, our watch tonight, accepting your worship's presence, ha a couple of his errant knaves as any in Messina. A good old man, sir, he'll be talking. As they say when the age is in, the wood is out. God help us as the world to see. Well said in faith, neighbor Burgess. Well, two men ride of a horse, one must ride behind. And God is to be worshipped, but all men are not alike, alas, good neighbor. Indeed, neighbor, he comes too short of you. Gifts that God gives. I must leave you. One word more, sir, our watch. Sir, have indeed comprehended two auspicious persons, and we would have them this morning examined before your worship. Take their examination yourself and bring it to me. I am now in great haste, as it may appear unto you. It shall be suffragans. Drink some wine, ere you go, fare you well. My lady, they stay for you to give your daughter to a husband. I'll wait upon them. I'm ready. Go, the partner, go. Get you to Francis Sequel, bid and bring his pen and inkhorn to the jailhouse. We are now to examination these men. We must do it wisely. We'll spare for no wit, I warrant you. Meet me at the jail. hither to marry this lady? No. To be married to her? Pray you come to marry her? Lady, you come hither to be married to this lord. I do. If either of you know any inward impediment why it should not be conjoined, I charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any, hero? None, my lord. Know you any, count? I dare make his answer none. Stand thee by, prior. Mother, with your free and unconstrained soul, will you give me this maiden, your daughter? As freely, son, as God did give her me. And what have I to give you that may counterpoise this rich and precious gift? Nothing, unless you render her again. Sweet prince, you learn me noble thankfulness. There, Leonata, take her back. Give not this rotten orange to your friend. She's but the sign and semblance of her honor. Behold, how like a maiden she blushes here. Would you not, all you that see her, say she were a maiden by these exterior shows? But she is none. She knows the heat of luxurious manner. Her blush is guiltiness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married. Not to knit my soul to a proven wanton. Dear my lord, if you and your own proof have vanquished the resistance of her youth and made defeat of her virginity. No, Leonata. I never tempted her with words so large, but as a brother to a sister showed her bashful sincerity and calmly love. And seem I ever otherwise to you? Out on thee seeming, you seem to me as dying in her orb, as chaste as the bud air be blown, but you are as intemperate in his blood as Venus or those pampered animals that rage in savage sensuality. Is my lord well that he doth speak so wide? Sweet prince, why speak not you? What should I speak? I stand dishonored that my dear friend, I've linked my dear friend to a common stale. Art these things spoken, or do I but dream? Ma'am, they are spoken, and these things are true. This looks not like a nuptial. True? Oh, God. Leonata, stand I not here. Is this the prince? Is this the prince's brother? Is this face heroes? Are our eyes our own? All this is so, but what of this, my lord? Let me but move one question to your daughter. And with that motherly and kindly power that you have in her, bid her answer truly. I charge thee do so as thou art my child. Oh, God defend me. Who am I beseech? What kind of catch I can call you this? To make you answer truly to your name. Is it not Hero? Who can blot that name with any just reproach? Marry that Cain Hero. Hero itself can blot out Hero's virtue. What man was he talked with you? Out at your window yesterday night betwixt twelve and one. 
Now, if you are a maiden, answer to this. I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Why then are you no maiden? Leonata, I am sorry you must hear. Upon mine other, my honor, myself, my brother, and this grieved count did see her, hear her at that hour last night, talk with a ruffian out by her chamber window who hath confessed to the vile encounters they have had a thousand times in secret. Fie, fie, they are not to be named, my lord, not to be spoken of. There is not chastity enough in language without offense to other them. And thus, pretty lady, I am sorry for thy much misgovernment. Oh, hero, what a hero hadst thou been if half thy outward graces had been placed around thy thoughts and virtues of thy heart, but farewell, most foul, most fair, farewell, thou pure in piety and impious purity. For thee I'll lock up all the gates of love, and on mine island shall conjecture hang, to turn all thoughts of beauty into harm, and never will it be more deserved. Hath no man's dagger here point for me? Why, how now, cousin, wherefore sink you down? Come, let us go. These things come thus to light, smother her spirit up. How doth the lady? Dead, I think! Help, aunt! Hero! My hero! Aunt, Senior Benedict Friar! Oh, fate, take not away thy heavy hand. Death is the fairest cover for her shame that may be wished for. How now, cousin hero? Have comfort, lady. Dost thou look up? Yea, wherefore should she not? Wherefore? Why doth that every earthly thing cry shame upon her? Could she hear the nigh the story that is printed in her blood? Do not limp here, do not ope thine eyes! Ma'am, ma'am, be patient. For my part, I am so tired in wonder, I know not what to say. Oh, on my soul, my cousin is belied! Lady, were you her bedfellow last night? No, truly not, although until last night I have this twelve month been her bedfellow. Confirmed, confirmed! With the two princes lie, and Claudio lie, who loved her so that speaking of her foulness, washed her with tears, hence from her, let her die! Hear me a little. By noting of the lady, I have burned a thousand blushing apparitions to start into her face a thousand innocent shames. And angel whiteness beat away those blushes, and in her eye had the pure fire to burn the air that these princes hold against her maiden truth. Lady, what man is here you accused of? They know that to accuse me, I know none. There's been some strange misprisonment in these princes. Two of them have the very bent of honor. And if their wisdoms be misled in this, the practice of it lives in John the Bastard whose spirits toils in the frame of villainies. I know not. If they speak with truth of her, these hands shall tear her. If they wrong her honor, the proudest of them shall well hear of it. Pause a while. Your daughter here, the prince is left for dead. Let her well be secretly kept in, and publish that she is dead indeed. What shall become of this? What will this do? Mary, this will carry it on her house, so change slander to remorse. Her dying, as it must be so maintained, upon the instant that she is accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every year. So will fare with Claudio, when he hears that she died upon his words. The idea of her life shall sweetly creep into the study of his imagination, and every lovely organ of her body shall become apparelled in a more precious habit, more moving, delicate, and full of life than when she lived indeed. And then he will mourn and wish she had not accused herself. Leonata, let the friar advise you. Being that a flow in grief the smallest twine may lead me. Tis well consented. Presently away. Come, lady. Die to live this wedding day's brought prolonged. Have patience and endure. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin is wrong. Oh, how much might the man deserve of me that would write her? Is there any way to sow such friendship? A very even way, but no such friend. May a man do it. It is a man's office, but not yours. I do love nothing in this world so well as you. Is not that strange? As strange as the thing I know not. If it were possible for me to say I love nothing in the world so well as you, but believe me not, and yet I lie not. I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I am sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Why, thank God, forgive me. What offense, sweet Beatrice. You stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest I loved you. And do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. <laughs> 
not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Farewell. Terry, good Beatrice. I am gone, though I am here. There is no love in you. Nay, I pray you let me go. Beatrice. In faith, I will go. We'll be friends first. You dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy? Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height of villain that hath slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswoman? Oh, that I were a man! What bear her in hand until they come to take hands? And then, with public accusation, uncovered slander, unmitigated rancor? Oh, God, that I were a man! I would eat his heart in the marketplace! Hear me, Beatrice! Sweet hero! She is wronged, she is slandered, she is undone. Beatrice. Princes and counties. He is now as valiant as Hercules, and only tells a lie and swears it. I cannot be a man with wishing. Therefore I will die a woman with grieving. Harry, good Beatrice, by this hand I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Think you in your soul that Count Claudio hath wronged Hero? Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand. And so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead, and so farewell. Factors. Mary, that am I, and my partner. Nay, that's certain. We have the exhibition to examine. But which of the offenders to be examined? Let them come before Master Constable. Yea, Mary, let them come before me. What is your name, friend? Horatio. Pray write down Horatio. Yours, sirrah. I am a gentleman, sir, and my name is Conrad. Write down Master Gentleman Conrad. Masters, it is proved already that you are little better than false knaves. How answer you for yourselves? Mary, sir, we say we are none. Sir, I say to you, it is thought you are false knaves. Sir, I say to you, you we, I say to you, we are none. Well, stand aside, for they are both in the tale. Have you writ down there, none? Master Constable, ye go not the way to examination. Ye must call forth the watch, which are their accusers. Let the watch come forth. Masters, I charge you in the prince's name, accuse these men. This man said, sir, that Don John, the prince's brother, was a villain. <gasps> Write down Prince John a villain. <laughs> Pray thee, fellow, peace. I do not like thy look, I promise thee. What heard you say him else? Mary, that he had received a thousand ducats of Don John for accusing the lady hero wrongfully. <gasps> Flat burglary as ever was committed. Nay, by mass that it is. What else, fellow? And that Count Claudio did mean, upon his word, to disgrace Hero in front of the whole assembly and not marry her. <gasps> oh, villain, that will be condemned into everlasting redemption for this. What else? This is all. Prince John in this morning stolen away. Hero, in this manner accused and in this very manner refused, and upon the sudden grief of this, died. Master Constable, let these men be bound. And brought to Leonata. I will go before and show her their examination. Come, let them be opinions. Let them be in the hands. Off, coxcomb! God's my life! Where's the sexton? Let him write down the prince's officer coxcomb. Come, bind them. Thou naughty varlet. Away! You are an ass! You are an ass! Dost thou not suspect my place? Dost thou not suspect my ears? I am a wise fellow, which is more an officer, Rando. Bring him away, that I have been writ down an ass! If you go on thus, you will kill yourself. It is not wisdom, but the second grief against yourself. I pray thee, cease thy counsel, which falls into mine ears as profitless as water.
water in a sieve. Bring me a mother that so loved her child, whose joy of hers overwhelmed like mine and bid her speak of patience. Measure her woe the length and breadth of mine and let it answer every strain for strain as thus for such and such a grief for such and every liniment, branch, shape, and form. Bring her yet to me and I of her will gather patience. But there's no such woman. Therefore give me no counsel. My griefs cry louder than advertisements. Therein do men from children nothing differ. I pray thee, peace. I will be flesh and blood, but there was never yet philosopher that can endure that you think patiently. Yet bend not all the harm upon yourself. Make those that do offend you suffer too. There thou speakest reason. Nay, I will do so. My soul doth tell me thy hero is blind. So shall Claudio know, so shall the prince and all of them that thus dishonor her. Come to the prince and Claudio hastily. Good in, good in. Day to both of you. Hear you, my lord. We have some haste, Leonardo. Some haste, my lord. Well, fare you well, my lord. Are you so hasty now? Well, all is one. Nay, do not quarrel with us. If she could wreck herself with quarreling, some of us would lie low. Who wrongs her? Mary, thou dost wrong me, thou dissembler, thou. Nay, never lay thy hand upon thy sword. I fear thee not. Mary, be true my hand, should it cause your age such cause of fear. In faith, my hand meant nothing to my sword. Tush, tush, man, never fleer and jest at me. I speak not like a donor, nor a fool. No, Claudio, to thy head, thou hast so wronged mine innocent child in me. Thy slender hath gone through and through her heart, and she lays buried with her ancestors. Oh, in a tomb where never scandal slipped. Save by this, save this by her, sprained by thine villainy. My villainy? Thine, Claudio, thine, I say. You say not right. Oh, I will not have to do it. You. Thou hast killed my child. If thou killest me, boy, thou shalt kill a woman. He shall kill two of us and men indeed. God knows I love my niece, and she is dead. Slandered to death by villains. Brother Anthony. Hold you content. What, man? I know them. Yeah, that lie, cog, flout, deprave, and slander. How they might hurt their enemies if they do! Gentlemen, both! My heart is sorry for what happened to your daughter, but on mine honor, she was charged with nothing but what was true and very full of proof. My lord, my lord! I will not hear you! No, come, brother, away! I will be heard! It shall! Or some of us will be smart for it. Here comes the man we went to see. No, senor, what news? Good day, my lord. Welcome, senor. You are almost come to part almost afraid. In a false quarrel, there is no true valor. I came to seek you both. We have been up and down to seek thee, for we are high proof melancholy would fain have it beaten out of us. But there is thy wit. It is in my scabbard. Shall I draw it? As I'm an honest man, he looks pale. Art thou sick or angry? If he be, he knows how to turn his girdle. Shall I speak a word in your ear? <laughs> God bless me from a challenge. You are a villain. I just not. I will make it good how you dare, with what you dare, and when you dare. Do me right or I'll protest your cowardice. You have killed a sweet lady and her death shall fall heavy on you. Now let me hear from you. Well, well I will meet you. Fare you well, boy. You know my mind. My lord, for your many courtesies, I thank you. But I must discontinue from your company. Your brother is fled from Messina. You have among you killed a sweet and innocent lady. For my lord lack beard there, he and I shall meet. And until then, peace be with him. He is an earnest! In most profound earnest, and all warrant you for the love of Beatrice. And hath challenged thee? Most sincerely. Come you, sir, if justice cannot tame you, she shall never weigh more reasons in her balance. Officers, what offense have these men done? Mary, sir, they have committed false report. Moreover, they have spoken untruths. Secondarily, they are slander. Sixth and lastly, they have belied a lady. Thirdly, they have verified unjust things. And to conclude, they are lying knaves. <clears throat> Who have you offended, masters, that you are thus bound to your answer? This learned constable is too cunning to be understood. What's your offense? Sweet Prince, I have deceived even your very eyes. What your wisdoms could not discover, these shallow fools have brought to light. Who in the night overheard me confessing to this man how Don John, your brother, incensed me to slander the Lady Hero? How you were brought into the orchard and saw me court Margaret in Hero's garments? How you disgraced her when you should marry her? 
The lady is dead upon mine and my master's false accusation. Runs not this speech like iron through your blood? I've drunk poison while he utters it. But did my brother set thee on to this? Yea, and pay me richly for the practice of it. He's composed and framed of treachery, and fled he is upon this villainy. Oh, sweet hero, I see thee now in a rare semblance as I did see you first. Come, bring away the plaintiffs, but this time the sexton hath reformed lean out of the matter. And masters, do not forget to specify when the time and place shall serve that I'm an ass. Here, here comes Master Leonata, and the sexton too. Which is the villain? Let me see his eyes. If you would know your wronger, look on me. Art thou the slave that with thy breath has killed mine and is a child? Yea, even I alone. No, not so, villain. Thou belies thyself. Here stand a pair of honorable men. The third is fled that had a hand in it. I thank you, princess, for my daughter's death, recorded with your high and worthy deeds. Once bravely done, if you would think you of it. I know not how to pray your patience, yet I must speak. Choose your revenge yourself. Pose on me what penance your invention can lay upon my sin, yet sinned I not but in mistaking. By my soul, nor I. I cannot bid you bid my daughter live. That were impossible. But I pray you both. Possess the paper in Messina, hear how innocent she died. And if your love can labor aught in sad invention, hand her an epitaph upon her tomb and seen it to her bones. Seen it tonight. Tomorrow morning come you to my house, and since you cannot be my son-in-law, be it my nephew. My brother hath a daughter almost a copy of my child that's dead, and she alone is the heir to both of us. Give her the right you should have given her cousin, and so dies my revenge. Your, your overkind is stuttering tears for me. I do embrace your offer, and tis pose henceforth of poor Claudio. Tomorrow, then, I expect your coming. Tonight I take my leave. This naughty man shall face the face be brought to Margaret, who I believe was packed in all this wrong, hired to it by your brother. No, by my soul she was not. Learn her not what she did when she spoke to me, but always hath been just and virtuous in anything that I do know by her. Moreover, sir, which is indeed not under white and black, this plaintiff here, the offender, did call me an ass. Oh. I beseech you, let it be remembered in his punishment. I thank thee for thy care and honest pains. Your worship speaks like a most thankful and reverent youth, and I praise God for you. There's for thy pains. God save the foundation. Go, I discharge thee of thy prisoner, and I thank thee. I leave with your worship an errant knave, which I beseech your worship to correct yourself for the example of others. God keep your worship. I wish your worship well. May God restore you to health. I humbly give you a leave to depart, and if a merry meeting may be wished, God prohibit it. Come, neighbor. Till tomorrow morning, lords, farewell. There are my lords. We look for you tomorrow. We will not fail you. Tonight I'll mourn with hero. Bring you these fellows on. We'll talk with Margaret, how her acquaintance grew with this lewd fellow. <clears throat> and one, and two, and one, and two, and one, and two, and one. Pray thee, sweet mistress Margaret, deserve well at my hands by helping me to the speech of Beatrice. Will you then write me a sonnet in praise of my beauty? And so I style, Margaret, that no man living shall come over it, for in most comely truth thou deservest it. To have no man come over me? Why shall I always keep low stairs? Thy wit is as quick as the greyhound's mouth. It catches. And yours as blunt as the fencer's foils, which hit would hurt not. A most manly wit, Margaret. It will not hurt a woman. And so, I pray thee, call Beatrice. I give thee the bucklers. Give us the swords. We have bucklers of our own. Uh, if you use them, Margaret, you must put in the pike for the vice, and they are dangerous weapons for maids. Well, I will call Beatrice to you, who I think hath legs. And therefore will come. Sweet Beatrice, wouldst thou come when I call thee? Yea, senor, and depart when you bid me. Oh, stay but till then. Then is spoken. Fare you well now. And yet, ere I go, 
Let me go with that I came, which is with knowing what hath passed between you and Claudio. Only foul words, and thereupon I will kiss thee. Foul words is but foul wind, and foul wind is but foul breath, and foul breath is noisome. Therefore I will depart unkissed. But I must tell thee plainly, Claudio undergoes my challenge. And I pray thee now tell me, for which of my bad parts didst thou first fall in love with me? For them all together. For which of my good parts did you first suffer love for me? Suffer love? A good epithet. I do suffer love indeed, for I love thee against my will. In spite of your heart, I think. Alas, poor heart. If you spite it for my sake, I will spite it for yours. For I will never love that which my friend hates. Thou and I are too wise to woo peaceably. And now tell me, how doth their cousin? Very ill. And how do you? Very ill, too. Serve God, love me, and men. There I will leave you too, for here comes one in haste. Madam, you must come to your aunt. Daughter's old coil at home. It is proof. My lady hero hath been falsely accused. The prince and Claudio mightily abused. And Don John is the author of it all, who is fled and gone. Will you come presently? Will you go hear this new senor? I will live in thy heart, die in thy lap, and be buried in thy eyes. And moreover, I will go with thee to thy aunt's. Tongue to death by slanderous tongues was the hero that here lies. Death and guerdon of her wrong give her fame which never dies, but the life that lived in shame lives in death with glorious fame. Hang upon this tomb, praising her while I am dumb. Unto thy bones, good night. Yearly I will do this right. Good morrow, masters. Put out your torches. The wolves have prayed, and look. The gentle day before the wheels of Phoebus roundabout dapples the drowsy east with spots of gray. Thanks to you all. Fare you well. Good morrow, masters, each his several way. Come, let us hence and put on other weeds, and then to Leonatus will we go. And with luckier hymen issues speed, for we rendered up this woe. Did I not tell you she was innocent? So are the prince and Claudia who accused her upon the air that you heard debated. But Sparger was in some fault for this, although against her will, as it appears in the true course of all the question. Well, I'm glad that all things sort so well. And so am I, being else by faith enforced to call young Claudio to a reckoning for it. Well, daughter and you gentlewoman all, withdraw to a chamber by yourselves, and when I send for you, come hither masked. The Prince and Claudio promised by this hour to visit me. You know your office, brother. You must be father to your brother's daughter and give her to young Claudio. Which I will do with confirmed countenance. Friar, I must entreat your pains, I think. To do what, senor? To bind me or undo me, one of them. Leonata, the truth it is, your daughter regards me with an eye of favor. That I, my daughter, lent her, tis most true. And I do with an eye of love requite her. The sights whereof I think you had from me, from Claudio and the prince, but what's your will? Your answer, ma'am, is enigmatical. But for my will, my will is your good will may stand with ours, this day to be conjoined in the state of honorable marriage. <laughs> in which, good friar, I shall desire your help. My heart is with your liking. And my help. Here comes the prince and Claudio. Good morrow to this fair assembly. Good morrow, Prince. Good morrow, Claudio. We here attend you. Are you yet determined today to marry with my brother's daughter? I'll hold my mind. Call her forth, brother. Here's the friar ready. Which is the lady I must seize upon? The same as she, and I duly do her. 
Why then, she's mine. Sweet, let me see your face. No, that you shall not till you take her hand before this friar and swear to marry her. Give me your hand before this holy friar. I'm your husband, if you like of me. And when I lived, I was your other wife. And when you loved, you were my other husband. <gasps> Another hero! <laughs> Nothing certainer. One hero died defiled, but I do live. And truly as I live, I am a maid. The former hero. Hero that is dead. She died, my lord, but whilst her slander lived. All this amazement can I qualify after the holy rites are ended. I'll tell you a fair hero's death. Till then, let wonder seem familiar, and to the chapel, let us presently. <laughs> <laughs> Soft and fair, friar. Which is Beatrice? I answer to that name. What is your will? Do not you love me? Why, no, no more than reason. Why then? Your aunt and the prince and Claudio have been deceived. They swore you did. Do not you love me? Troth, no. No more than reason. Why, then my cousin Margaret and Ursula are much deceived, for they did swear you did. They swore you were almost sick for me. They swore you were well nigh dead for me. Tis no such matter. Then you do not love me? No, truly, Button. Friendly recompense. Come, cousin, I'm sure you love the gentleman. And I'll be sworn upon it that he loves her, for here's a note written in his own hand, a halting sonnet of his own pure brain fashioned to Beatrice. And here's another written my cousin's hand stolen from her pocket, containing her affection unto Benedict. <laughs> a miracle! Here's our own hands against our hearts. Come, I will have thee, but by this light I take thee for pity. I would not deny thee, but by this good day I yield upon great persuasion, and partly to save your life, for I was told you were in a consumption. Peace, I will stop your mouth. <laughs> yes! <laughs> come, come, we are friends. Let's have a dance ere we are married, that we may lighten our own hearts and our wives here. First of my word, therefore play music. Prince, thou art sad. Get thee a wife, get thee a wife. <laughs> Not in him till tomorrow. I'll devise thee brave punishments for him. Strike up, pipers.